the essence of anything is to be essenceless, which means also to have infinite contradictory essences. Any determination is one particular thing, no particular thing, and infinitely many things, all possible things. This provides us with a good template for the Tiantai Three Truths, provisionally posited, empty, and the center. To understand this, we must see how this Lotus Sutra angle on truth changes things decisively. The criterion of truth, recall, was what is conducive to liberation from suffering, which means what will, if given full play, contradict and cancel itself, serving as a vehicle by which to pass beyond itself like a raft. Ultimate truth, on the other hand, is the end of suffering, and thus also given, honorifically as it were, the name of truth, though it has no determinate propositional content. So it stands for Nagarjuna. Chantai theory uses the Nagarjunian method to perform reductio ad absurdums on all existing theories. But these are not to show that they are false. This is precisely what shows that they are true. For true, as we've seen, means simply capable of leading beyond itself, capable of destroying itself, conducive to the move beyond all clinging to fixed views, conducive to ending suffering. When a metaphysical view is shown to involve contradictions, it is shown to be a conventional truth rather than a mere falsehood. It serves as a raft to the abandoning of views. There are infinite sentient beings with infinite differing needs, and in some circumstances one view will work, while in other circumstances others will work. So the Buddha preaches self and non-self, not because one is conventional and the other is ultimate truth. Both are conventional truths, meaning both can, in given circumstances, lead to the dropping of both views. Neither is intrinsically more true than the other, for to be intrinsically anything would be to have a self-nature. Hence, we have the other enormous change in Tiantai. Ultimate truth is no longer beyond conventional truth, no longer a higher truth. They are equal, and in fact, the very idea of ultimate truth is itself a conventional truth. However, they are not only equal. The most radical Tiantai move is that conventional and ultimate truth are identical. Whatever is conventional truth is also ultimate truth, and vice versa. The point is illustrated nicely in the Tiantai interpretation of the story of the lost son from the Lotus Sutra in chapter 4. The resources of the estate are what the father uses as a skillful means to draw his son to the final recognition of his own status, to his final enlightenment, the servants, the buildings, the treasury. But these are not abandoned when the son finally does come to his inheritance. On the contrary, these are the inheritance. This means that what one is enlightened to when one is enlightened is not the dropping away of all skillful means, the letting go of the raft, the transcendence of all determinate phenomenal concepts, ideas, practices, and forms. Rather, these things are the very content of enlightenment. Enlightenment is not the renunciation of skillful means. Enlightened is the mastery of all skillful means, the integration of skillful means, the more thorough possession of them rather than the discarding or elimination of them. Conventional truth is not what you renounce when you reach ultimate truth, as in the parable of the raft and the two truths theory. The other shore to which the raft rafts us, allowing us to renounce the raft, turns out to be another raft, which rafts us to an infinity of other rafts. And we ourselves, who are rafting on these rafts, are, like all other entities, only raft rafting Rafts. Conventional truth is what you get when you reach ultimate truth. The content of the two is the same. Ultimate truth is simply a name for the totality of conventional truths and the virtuosic mastery of being able to move from one conventional truth to another, 
unobstructedly as the situation demands, the comprehension of the way they fit together, or can function together, or the way in which they are each, as it were, versions of each other. Ultimate truth is the non-obstruction between conventional truths, the fact that they all interpenetrate, that in their non-absoluteness each is simply a different way of saying what the others say. Ultimate truth is the free flow of conventional truths, their co-presence in spite of their apparent oppositeness. That is, in terms of the parable, you are a poor worker and you are a rich son also. The Tiantai view is not only that they are identical in content, it turns out further that once the very idea of conventionality or provisional positing is unpacked, it reveals itself to mean nothing more or less than what the very idea of ultimate truth means, emptiness of any intrinsic attributes or indeterminacy. What they both mean, unpacked, is the center, the very convertibility between provisional positing and emptiness, between determinancy and indeterminancy, such that by adducing any one of these three, all three are implied. It is only this that enables the free convertibility between any one conventional truth and any other.